Is this frequency open? Is this frequency open? CQ, 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 WX0, MIK, Whiskey X-Ray 0, Mike India Kilo. CQ, 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 WX0, MIK. Hello and welcome to the next edition of the Mike Wills Podcast. This is the Dog Days of Podcasting edition for August 24th, 2019. Wow, I am way behind. I am your host, Mike Wills, and my call sign is WX0MIK. We are going through the ARRL Amateur uh, or Hand Radio License Manual for Technician. Uh, what's the edition? I should look at that again. I should know that. Fourth edition, which is good through, I believe, 2022. June 30th, 2022. Uh, so you have a few couple of years to, t- to try and take that test. So, um, yeah, the last week was absolutely heck. And um, finally getting all caught up. Um, this weekend I've been kind of tired, so I just kind of took it to rest. Now we're going to get caught up. And I'm still yawning. Oh, joy. So I'm recording between a couple other things here, but uh, I thought I'd at least knock one out for a quick break and then, uh, record the other one to get caught up for today. Heck, I might try and record a third one here. So I want to uh, knock through a couple different sections within chapter eight here, because most of these are pretty quick. And uh, chapter 8.1 is control operators. Um, so they kind of start by saying, uh, if you read the rules themselves, it can be a little confusing. So let's be sure to clearly define the terms. Operating rules are based on two ideas, a control operator and a control point. A control operator is a licensed operator who is responsible for making all FCC rules are followed. The control point is where the control operator operates the transmitter. That can be the controls of the radio or by using some more connecting link from other location. So a control operator, that's you. You are the operator and your control station is literally wherever you are controlling your radio. Your control point is the point of which you're controlling that. So like some HF radios especially, you can remote operate them um, I was just reading one that's a was a flex radio. It's only a two thousand dollar radio, not counting the control head for another uh, fifteen hundred bucks or something like that. Uh, yeah, but anyway, you could control that from anywhere in the world. So as long as you have internet connection, you could control that. So that's your control point. Um, a control operator is late is the licensed amateur. Blah blah blah. I kind of said that. A control operator must be named in the FCC Amateur License Database or be an alien with reciprocal reciprocal operating authorization. An alien is a citizen of another country. So if your buddy has a license and he's from another place, as long as he is allowed to do a transmit within the U.S., he can control your, your equipment. Uh, all transmissions must be made under the supervision of a control operator. There is only one control operator for a station at a time. Um, let's talk about that in a second. The control point is where the station's control function is performed. Usually the control point's at the transmitter, and the control operator physically manipulates the controls of the transmitter. The control point can be remotely located and connected by phone lines, internet, or radio link. So... If you kind of listen to some of this, it's, you know, it's really specific language. However, the one about under supervision of control operator. And actually within another, yeah, 8.4, they start talking about third-party operations. So you could, with your kid, your wife, share your license to the point where you're standing next to them and they can talk. 
Um, but you are sitting right there. You can take the radio away the second they start doing something illegal or against the rules. And so, but, you know, that way um, I've seen, I think the general book they talk about, well, there's this foreign exchange student that want, that is a licensed amateur that wants to talk to their family overseas. Is that allowed? Well, and if you talk, if you kind of look through rules, there's some rules surrounding that, which we'll talk a little more later. But in general, it, the answer is it depends. And we'll talk about that when we get to 8.4. And I'm not even sure that goes into all the details that even the general does. Um, so then they talk a little bit more about privileges and guest operating. See, again, this doesn't make sense because they talk about guest operating, but then third party is down the road. Whatever. Um, as a control operator, you may operate the station any way permitted by the privileges of your license class. It doesn't matter what the station's owner's privileges are. Only the privileges of the control operator. So if you go to your Elmer's, I think we talked about Elmer's a little bit. Elmer is the more experienced person that's helping you get your license. So if you're working with your Elmer and you only have a general license, you can't operate. If, if he is letting you use his call and he's right there or she, um, you could use the amateur extra frequencies. But if you're using your own call license, you're only allowed your call sign. Or you're only allowed your own frequencies, if that makes sense. So if I had an HF radio, you could only work, and you had a technician, you could only work within the air, the bands that you have access to, which is mostly, like we talked before, CW. So here's an example, actually, that they use, which I think I covered it. Your technician class license, licensee, you're invited to spend the afternoon at a station of a friend who holds an extra class license. While your friend is supervising, acting as control operator, you can operate the station on amateur any amateur band and mode. This is very common and a good way to learn about HF bands and the styles of operating. However, if your friend decides to stop out, step out of the station or run an errand, you are only restricted to your technician licenses. So there's a little bit of give and take there, but um, that they kind of designed it so you can learn under a tu tu un as under a tutor, but you can't just keep using their system because you're not you're not using their privileges based on the system. And they talk about that a little bit more down the road here a little bit. Um. So just, it's more of a, hey, by the way, than it is really, you know, critical unless you know someone who, ha you know, you're work playing with someone else's equipment, you're not going to necessarily know that uh, or need to worry about that too much. It was more of a kind of keep it in the back of your head just in case. Um, 8.2, start talking about identification. In most contacts, the other party can't see you. They have no way of identifying your signals other than your call sign. It's also important that other stations be able to determine who is transmitting. Your call sign is your identity on the air. And to identify, identification means to send or speak your call over the air. The first rule of, of identification is that unidentified transmissions are not allowed. Unidentified means that no call sign was associated with the transmission. Only The only exception is when your signals are, are controlling a model aircraft. And kind of think about that. If you could use a 50 watt within, I don't know what ranges work best for model aircraft, you can get some pretty decent range on that. Um, but ultimately, you are expected at any case to use your call sign with any transmission. Uh, remote control signals are weak and don't travel long distances, so a call sign is not much of use. Okay, so that's talking about the model aircraft stuff a little bit more. Um, if you need to make a short transmission, test an antenna or make adjustments to your radio, just stating or sending your call sign will suffice. So you can just say, you know, WX0, MIK, just testing. And keep it at that. 
Um, identification rules are simple. So you give your call sign at least once every 10 minutes during a contact and when communication is finished. And I think I've talked about this earlier. Or generally, it's it's a practice to give your call sign at the beginning as well. It's not, quote, law, but it is generally accepted because then you know who you're talking to. If you just start talking and all of a sudden say, oh, yeah, by the way, I'm WX0MIK, now you're like, oh, okay, uh, hi, uh, Mike, how are you doing? No, it's just like any other greet. You know, you give your name first, you start talking, you give your name every you know, your name or call, or a call sign every ten minutes or less, and then uh, you just you can keep talking. Um, most people are more you know, what suave, whatever you want to call it. They're they're more smooth about it to where they start just talking and then they uh, they they wrap up um, saying WX zero MIK, and then they wait for the next person to talk. Um. If your contact's less than 10 minutes, just uh, give your call sign at the end of the contact is all that they're kind of pointing out there. Uh, so and there's other types of calls out here. Tactical call signs. So imagine this. You are, well, let's just, um, let's pick a, um, like a, um, come on, brain, a marathon. So in your various waypoints within here. Uh, so the examples that they give here is Waypoint 5, First Aid Station, Hollywood and Vine, so maybe just like a intersection, and Fire Watch on Cold, Cold Water Ridge. These can be used at any time, but are generally used in emergency public service operation. So this is one thing that's not really clear within the book. So imagine you're at, you're in a, or working a uh, marathon, and so you want to call First Aid Station. So I would pick up the radio and say, first aid station, this is WX0MIK. Whoever is working the first aid station that time would then ret- rec- uh, would call back, this is first aid station, um, WX0MIK, what, what, what's your need? And then, because you, it's always stationed by a, an amateur radio licensed person, but you don't necessarily know who's working it. Working it. So what you're address, when you're point really what this is is you're uh, calling out to a location, not to a particular person, and that's really what they're trying to say here. So it you're still an amateur licensed person, and you are still talking to an amateur licensed person, but you don't know who you're talking to in the in this kind of a case. So really, what you're doing is you're just calling out a place and then whoever's working will respond back that's really what they're talking about here and i did not get that by reading this reading this and it's extremely short section i'm listening to david castler he talked about this more and then it made a lot more sense so uh keep that in mind when you read that technical call section it's really just it's for more of a broad communication than it is you know it's kind of like calling net control Net control. You don't know, may not know who's working net control. You're just calling net control so that you know who they know who you're trying to talk to. Self assigned indicators. When operating away from your home station, you should add information to your call sign so that other stations are aware of your location. For example, an Alaskan station would add some extra information when operating the lower 48 states. Otherwise, special Alaskan prefixes would cause confusion about the location of the station. For example, KL77C is operating from location in the 3rd District. He could always give his call sign KL7, KL7CC slash W3 added the w, slash WT as a self-signed indicator. Um, as I, and maybe this is more an HF thing, but at least within, um, Within um, re- local repeater type work, people don't do that. Uh, though I, I've heard people say mobile. Uh, that's about it. You can say stroke slash portable. It's some people would say portable or mobile, something like that. But beyond that, I haven't heard too many people say slash. 
The only time when it's probably more important is when you go from like a tech to a general or from a general to an amateur extra, or I guess from technical amateur extra if you want to do too. In that, those particular cases, especially if you're working, let's say you're, I move up to amateur extra. When I make a call, I would say WX0 MIK slash AE, indicating that I now have an amateur extra license. And that way people say, oh, well, it says here you're, you're general, but you said that you're past your test. So that's really what that one is. is, for, is. The uh, last part that they talk about in here is test transmissions. Oh, one example of the last one, too, uh, self-assigned indicators. Uh, I think I talked about a few days ago when, when I was in Canada, what I would have to do is I would have to add in a V slash VE3 to my call sign indicating that I am actually within Canada when I'm broadcasting <clears throat> and that I was in Ontario. That's part of what that is, is adding this self-assigned indicator. Um, test transmissions. Uh, when you're making a, a test transmission, and I say I don't hear a lot of that, um, at least in the repeater, but I'll people say um, WX0, MIK testing, or I don't know, V. I don't remember that part. Or send W1 AW VVV, where V is usually used as a Morse code test signal. So ultimately, you know, if you're testing, uh, like I will be with my intent with my antenna here whenever I get it set up. Um I'll do the same thing. I'll uh, call, put my call sign out saying testing and uh just look at the SW meter, what however I'm testing it, and just make sure it works. So that's end of 8.2. I'm going to do 8.4 and 8.5 or 8.8.3 and 8.4. And maybe on um, 8.5, I'll I'll do another one for that separately. <clears throat> so section eight and section nine are kind of going through the or section eight is really kind of go, talking about the operating regulations. And then chapter nine is really electrical safety. And if you're not stupid, chapter nine is pretty simple, uh, meaning that you use good sense. Although, um, I'll get in that when we get there. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to wrap it up here and I will talk to you tomorrow. So thank you so much for listening. This is WX9K. Wow. <laughs> WX9MIK signing off. The frequency is clear. WX0MIK73.